Last time you saw us at the Harris Distillery, and I delighted in the whiskey experience. Well, they did say it was going to rain a lot later, so more than it's raining now. Locks were circled. Dogs got wet. And Ellie served me a pretty poor meal. The taste is not that good either. Oh! <laughs> Welcome to the channel. We are Graham and Ellie. We are Wizard in the Wild. Day 12 today, day 12 of our trip. Day 12 finds us at our lovely park up by the lock and today we're going to attempt part of the postman's walk and then we're going to drive out to have a look at the lighthouse on Scalpay. We've no idea at this stage where we're going to be staying tonight We'll work that out later. We're going, in a minute, we're going up to the postman's walk. I don't know if you better see it from there, but it's, it, it's up that hill. The path is probably obscured by Ellie's big head. But um, yeah, it's up that hill. We don't know is how much of it we'll do. It's a very long yeah. walk, but uh, it'd be nice to get a viewpoint, wouldn't it? And to actually see a bit oh, of yeah, it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the weather's not that reliable today either, so. And then on this road, um, the Scalpay Lighthouse is out at the end of the peninsula, isn't mm. it? So we're going to drive out to that to have a look. Which will be good. But first, the postman's walk. So this is our start point, and it's about three, three and a half miles to Renningdale. It's quite a difficult walk, I understand. So let's get going and see how far we can get. Right, I'm recording this at the bottom of the hill, because we're just about to walk up. And I think I should be puffing a lot. So uh, that's where we're going. Ellie's a bit further up, you can't see her at the moment. On I go. The postman's path symbolises Rangdale's rich and tempestuous history. Until 1990, when the settlement became the last place in Britain to be connected by road. The postman's path was one of the main access routes to the village. Blimey, he's fit. Evidently a lot of mountain bikers do this route. I think my brother Brian would like this. In the 1970s and the 1980s, local postman Kenny McKay, who still lives in the village, tramped the steep and winding path to Erga and back three times a week with the post. Essential supplies were brought in by boat from Scalpay or sometimes from Marag on the shores of Loch Seaforth. When work began on the Rennigdale Road in 1989, it marked the triumph of a 60-year campaign by local residents. See what I mean about the puffing? Whew. It's a bit of a blow, isn't it, walking up there? Isn't it? It's really steep. I can't believe that cyclist getting up there. Yeah. We don't know if he's got an e-bike or just very he's good power to weight ratio. I could do with a better power to weight ratio. Nice views though. <laughs> well, it's a lovely path. Quite hard going though, isn't it, Al? It is. It's well, it's constantly up, isn't it, really? Yeah, it is at the moment. Mm -hmm. Until we get to the top, and then it'll be constantly it's down. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that bit. Jazz. Jazz is demonstrating inappropriate behaviour today. Eating and, and rolling. I was. We'll just leave it at that. Yes, little monkey. Now we've come across a little waterfall. I'm shouting because I don't know if you can hear me. Wow. I don't know what altitude we've reached, but uh, I will check in a moment. Even the poor stream doesn't know which way to go. Some of it's going that way, and some of it's going that way. But all of it downhill.
We've got a bit of washing to do. I should have sent Ellie up here. She could have washed the uh, the undies out in the uh, in the stream. There's a little bridge just up here. Blowy. I'll just put Maya on her lead because she doesn't like the bridge. Come on, good girl, good girl. I wonder if that's what they were repairing yesterday. Maybe, maybe. There's Merlin down there, Grace. Well, it's levelled out a bit on this bit, isn't it? <laughs> Makes it look easy, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> Don't be fooled. Yeah. Although this bit gets a bit steeper. Yep. This is like quite a lot of it, really, isn't it? Yeah. Like this sort of gradient. I really don't know how that cyclist is pedalling up here. Yeah, we'll find him dead up here in a minute with a heart attack. I won't have any puff to give CPR, that's for sure. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I've seen a few of these around. I don't really know what they are. One each side. As if say it's counting as you walk through it. I have no idea what it is. So if anyone's got any ideas, let us know, please. That's the way to travel round here. A four by four quad bike. And we had to jump out of his way. Hey? I <laughs> said so we had to jump out of his way, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we flew dead. I thought, I can hear a vehicle coming, I can't believe this. I didn't believe you to start with. No, I said, that's a quad bike. <laughs> ah, look at that view though. Come on then. Onward. I don't know how high we are at the moment. Let's have a little look, eh? 160 metres. Doesn't sound very high, does it? Well, I don't know how much further we're going, but just thought I'd show you this. How you can see how well they maintain the path. It's pretty good. Are we going any further, Al? If I knew there was a nice view up there, I'd go to the top of that hill. But we won't know unless we go. Yeah. Well, let's just go to to that bit there then. Okay. I doubt if you can hear me, but if you can, I think we're gonna, this is as far as we're gonna go. So I'm just gonna check the height. And it's 230 meters. Doesn't sound impressive really. But all of that is from sea level. Or lock level. Magnificent. Well, this is absolutely stunning. If they weren't forecasting high winds and rain imminently, I think I would just have to go that way. Yeah. But I think we've got to be sensible. The dogs are getting a bit tired as well. And just do be grateful for the beauty we've seen. Yeah. Make our way down slowly. <laughs> Coming down is into the wind. I've had to turn my hat round. <laughs> Nearly lost it a couple of times already. I 
I'd just like to thank Val Mead Hodgson for putting us onto this walk and indeed the uh, park up. Thanks Val, been brilliant. I don't know if you can see the red lights on the hill up there. Oh, we turned them off now. That's a little quad bike, four by four, taking more gravel up there to, uh, uh, to repair the paths. They do a damn good job, actually. We were talking to the, to the bloke, weren't we, Al? We were. He was really interesting to chat to. Yeah. He was explaining how yesterday they were repairing a bridge way over the hill. So obviously taking all the supplies up there, wood and what have you. And today they're just repairing the path with lots of big buckets of gravel. Come on. All that water you were walking in, and, and now you're going to get washed, you don't like Yeah, another dog wash. Yeah. We have to find places. Unfortunately, uh, Jazz has been rolling in some pretty unsavoury things. Yeah. And trying to eat it as well, in fact. Yeah. So sweet. People think you're so sweet, Jazz. Yeah. Cold, little moo. <laughs> Very cold. Oh. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Sorry for them. I'm glad my hands are not in there. Nice and clean though. Can't grumble about that. You're the cleanest, as usual. It's quite a big dog bath, this one. <laughs> <laughs> so we're setting off for Scalpe. I want to have a look at the lighthouse there. It's only about uh, six or seven miles, so it's not going to take us too long to get there. In the distance, we catch sight of the amazing Scalpe Bridge. This is where we're just going over it now. The bridge to Scalpe from Harris was opened in 1997. Scalpe is around two and a half miles long, and the main settlement where people live is near to the bridge. The island does have a community shop and a cafe, but unfortunately it was closed when we visited, so no chance of a cuppa. Then we come to these fellas having a head banging contest. No fighting, guys, break it up. Go on. The sheep whisperer. In 2011, the population was 291 and there has been a steady decline as people go elsewhere to work. The scenery on the drive was glorious, but what we didn't realise was that we were going to be a bit disappointed. This is what the car park looked like on Google Maps, and this is what it looked like in reality. No way were we going to be able to park here. Merlin's a big boy, so there was no chance of being able to squeeze him in anywhere. But luckily, this fella here directed us to a place down the road where we could at least turn round. Thank you, mate. Very helpful. So, we abort the lighthouse visit and we vow to come back another day. So we change our plans and head for Tarbert. Ellie is very excited about this next bit. You will just have to join us next week to find out what it is. Thank you for joining us this week. If you've enjoyed our vlogs, please do consider liking, subscribing and giving us the thumbs up. Oh, and don't forget to comment. We love to hear what you think of our vlogs. And join us next time for some more adventures with Wizard in the Wild.